been given the invitation to come into your presence this morning. Lord, we look forward with a joyful expectation of future events coming our way in you. Father, I thank you for this time. I ask that you would impart unto these people this day strength, nourishment to their bodies in your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I was talking with Clayton a couple weeks ago when I was here visiting with him, and he was sharing with me about a blog. Anybody know what a blog is? I don't. Um, a website, I think, uh, on a Christian cowboy somewhere in Texas, and he has a um, phraseology, save a cowboy. Is that possible? You don't think it is? Well, I do. 41 years ago, this cowboy gave his heart to the Lord and has been serving him with all of his heart. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. So yes, it can happen. I don't like notes, but I brought some. And I did get permission from Paul that I have four hours. Not that we're going to be here or not. <laughs> yeah, it may, no, may not be anybody to minister to, but yes. I'm not a minister, per se, as um, a preacher, though I have ministered for years the gospel of the kingdom with joy, great joy, as all of you are ministers of the gospel of the kingdom of God. I do much better teaching than I do as a preacher. So, anybody bring their Reader's Digest this morning besides me? Good, because you're going to have to follow along. For Paul and Gary and um, Miles, I'm going to be preaching to the choir. So I need your backup, because you already heard this. Many of you probably are going to hear this again, too, but be patient with me. Turn with me if you would. And I may be reading out a different translation than you guys. Mark, the fourth chapter. And you're probably all thinking that I'm going to be ministering a traditional Christmas message. Well, I'm, not, I'm a non-traditional, so you're not going to get a traditional Christmas message. Am I speaking loud enough for everybody? You all can hear me? Okay. Mark, chapter 4. I'm going to read from 23 to 25. It says, If a man has ears to hear, let him be listening. Let him both perceive and comprehend. But be careful what you are hearing, for what measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more. I was reading out of the Amplified Version, if you guys don't have the Amplified, I like it. I'm a King James man, but I do like the Amplified now and then. But I want to pick out a word here for a moment that he spoke of in this passage. It says, be careful. And if you're following along in King James, he says, take heed. Both those words mean the same thing, or phrases mean the same thing. It means to gaze with open eyes as at something remarkable. And it signifies an earnest but more continued inspection. Do you know this word here, these 66 books called the Bible, is full of wonderful kingdom truths and kingdom principles, just waiting for you and I to appropriate them to our walk. Jesus said, I came to give you all life and life more abundantly. And this is where we find it, right here. In these books. Nicodemus in John chapter 3. If you don't want to go there, you're welcome to. He was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. Came to Jesus one day and he asked Jesus, he said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
Jesus responded and says, a man, if a, man, uh, must, a man must be born again in order to inherit eternal life. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's in verse 3. Let's get down to verse 5. And there's two phrases here I want to pick out. But in verse 5 he says, Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. There's two uh, phrases here I really want to focus on. One is entering, and one is seeing. Except a man be born again, he cannot see kingdom truths or kingdom principles. And he cannot enter into those truths or principles unless he's born again. Are all of you in this room born again? You're like raising hands. <clears throat> but if you're not, before I became a Christian, when I picked up this Bible here and read it, it made no sense to me. It says that the natural man, the unregenerate man, receiveth not the things of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can they know them, for only the things of God are, are spiritually discerned. So prior to this cowboy accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, I had no idea what this book meant. It was Greek, if I can say it. I know it's written in Greek and Hebrew, but it was Greek to me. I, I had no comprehension of it at all. Except the man be born again, he cannot see. When you're reading these words on these white pages, he cannot see these kingdom truths or principles. He might want to. You're not going to understand them. <coughs> You're not going to be able to enter into them either. And what do I mean by enter into them? I mean by appropriating them to your walk. I know the scripture is saying that we're going to enter into the kingdom one day and we're going to see the kingdom one day. But we live here and now. This Bible wasn't written for us for the future. It's written for us here and now. That we live life more abundantly. Jesus says, I came to give you life and that life more abundantly today. So how do I do that? By appropriating my father's words and my walk. That's one way. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I appreciate the uh, water that somebody gave me this morning. What do they call it? It's just preaching water. Preaching water. <laughs> what was that? Wet. Wet. Well, today I will be talking a little bit about the gift and the giver. So that is a little bit of Christmas, isn't it? But before I get to that, I want to talk to you all about sin. Right. Do I have to talk about sin? We talked about sin this morning, though, didn't we? The Sunday school? Yeah. In 1 John, chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. It says, There is a sin unto death. In verse 17, it says, And there's a sin not unto death. And you say, Well, Ron, I thought all unrighteousness was sin. Well, it is. And the scriptures also says that the wages of sin is death. And that's true, too. But there's a sin unto death, and there's a sin not unto death. Kind of confusing there, isn't it? A little bit of confusion, but let me help you out. Let's take a look at the word wages. What is wages? Compensation for something you practiced. We all have a professional life. I'm a person who has multiple trades. I made most of my living in the meat business. Uh, and horses. I practiced those things and I got pretty good at it. And I received the compensation for it. The second Peter talking about sin. If you want to turn there, Second Peter chapter 2. I'm not sure which verse it is, but maybe you guys can find it for me. <laughs> Talking about ones whose eyes are full of sin, where they cannot cease from sin. 
beguiling an unstable soul, a heart that exercises covetous practices, one who loves the wages of unrighteousness. This comes from those who deliberately and knowingly and willingly walk in sin without repentance. In John 16, <clears throat> verse 9, 8 9, it says that the world's sin unto death is they refuse to believe in me, Christ. Not me, but Christ. And the Holy Spirit will convict the world of its sin and the coming judgment. That's the sin unto death. Those who refuse to believe in Christ Jesus. You ever met any of those? Who refuse to believe in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> now the sin unto, not unto death, goes to those who are born again believers. Who end up falling into sin, not knowing that it was there, and all of a sudden they realize, whoa, I just transgressed. But they're quick to repent. What does the Lord say? He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you repent. And what happens if you don't repent? That you refuse, don't you, to believe in Him. I've been working here in the oil field now for three years. And at one point in time in my life, I said, Lord, give me men. Just give me men that I can minister to. Never had any idea that I'd be coming to a state and working in a job that has so many men. But interesting enough, talking to these men, most of them are void of the presence of God. They have no idea that they need Him or that they need salvation. I've had a wonderful opportunity to take them to Scripture and just talk to them and show them the error of their ways. Many of you, you're probably all born again, students of the Father's Word, but maybe there's a few of you that aren't. I want to take you back to the book of Genesis real quick. In the creation, that's, that's a, in the beginning, God created man in the image of likeness of man created he them both male and female created he them this male in the original hebrew text is zakar the word female in the original text is nekabal both mean god kind created in the image and likeness of god When God created man, he placed him in the garden and he gave him a command. He says, you can eat of any tree in the midst of the garden. You can freely eat. But of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, or in the middle of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it lest ye die. Satan. Who was it two weeks ago that ministered here who said that God is enough? I can't remember the gentleman's name. But he also talked about the deceiver. Lucifer. The same adversary Jesus had, Adam and Eve had, is the same adversary you and I have today. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God created man, placed them in, in this planet, and gave them dominion over it. Made them out of the dust of the earth. The dust of the earth. The very dust that Satan once walked on. Gave them dominion over the earth. And he decided... He was furiated with the fact that someone would be made out of the very dust that he walked on. And he decided he was going to come up with plan A, plan B, plan C to destroy this creation of God's. 
And of course, it's unfortunate he's not planning and work for him. He told him, he told him, thou shalt not surely die if you eat of this tree, because God's known both good and evil. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? 